Last year, a certain place in my city, Jakarta, was attacked by a suicide bomber. Let's imagine this event happened inside a superhero comic book. The villain, in this case, the suicide bomber, arrives at the scene. He walks around, surveying the people and the place. Once he's settled, all he needs to do is press this little red button, and boom, everything blows up. People are running away, kids are screaming, police and ambulance sirens can be heard from every direction. Suddenly, the superhero with his cape or her shining armor comes and saves the day. They help put civilians to safety, puts out the fire, takes the injured to hospital, and most importantly, defeats the villain. We all love these stories, don't we? We all grow up hearing stories of heroism, especially superheroes, how Captain America, with all his loyalty and super strength, he can save the world and win the hearts of everyone. And how Batman, using all his money, he creates super gadgets to save his city, Gotham. Tell me, who doesn't love them? Who doesn't dream to be saved by them even though you know they're fictional? Admit it, all of you must have dreamt about it. But those heroes, the Avengers, Batman, Superman, they have their own place to be a hero. They have their own stories where they put up their shining armor or capes or tights and, you know, save the world. But in the end, they are only stories. They don't exist in the real world, in the real world we live in. So who then? are the everyday heroes among us. They don't wear capes or tights or having superpowers. So what do they look like? The dictionary says a hero is someone who is admired for their courage, noble qualities, and outstanding achievements. But to me, I think that heroes are people who have the courage to help other people. As simple as that. It can be if the person just smiles at stranger. To me, that is an act of heroism. Why? Because we never know what the person might be going through, and smiling at stranger takes some strength and effort. It takes effort to put aside our doubts at smiling at stranger. It takes strength to, to share the same feelings with others, to have empathy. There are a lot of heroes in real life like Malala, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King, Sukarno, Indonesia's first president, and a whole bunch of others. And if I ask you what made them a hero, uh, most of us will say, let's take an example, Malala. Most of us will say she's a hero because she fights for girls' education. She's a hero because she sacrificed herself. Or maybe other example, Martin Luther King. He's a hero because he fought for freedom for people of color. She fought for this, he fought for that, and the whole list goes on. But really, though, let's take a moment and think about it. All the heroes I just mentioned and the, and the heroes we all know, is help other people. Malala helped girls to have education. Martin Luther King helped people of color to gain greater freedom and equality in the United States. They all believe in equality and that everyone should get the same chances. They have visions to make this world a better place. You see, as we grow up, we realize that life is much harder and tougher than it looks. And we humans, we are social creatures. We need each other in order to survive. We need each other in order to live. We need each other to be our heroes. Heroes come in different shapes and sizes. We don't need to have superpowers to be heroes. We don't need to have a lot of money to be heroes. We don't need to stand in front of a gun to be a hero. We don't need to sacrifice ourselves to death to be a hero. But we do have to be kind to be a hero. We have to be helpful to be a hero. We have to be empathetic to be a hero. We have to do all these things and other good things to be a hero. These traits seem simple, but it actually takes time to practice. So what if we start practicing for the day when we can be a hero? 
What if we had a hero training? Going back to what happened in Jakarta last year, I think that no matter how long we waited for that superhero with his cape or her shining armor to come, they wouldn't, because the real hero in this event wasn't them. It was the people who decided fear wouldn't brought them down and help other people instead. I used to think my hero was Superman and Batman. Trust me, no joke. I have this huge photo frame filled, my, filled with my photos and theirs. And then, as I get older, I stare at it and think. I think that there are more people who have been there for me through it all. And the thing about life, it has its own up and down in which there are some moments we feel like stopping, maybe like throwing up. But there is someone who shared the same ride with me through my ups and downs, and that is my mother. She has no cape, no superpowers, no exploding bank account. She's just another human being, but she's there for me. She guided me, and she helped me. She is the reason I am standing here today, so can I say that she's my hero? Yes, I can. I look around at how I might become a hero, and the best example I could find wasn't wearing a cape. It was my mother. She's a hero because she's there for me to rely on. She's a hero because she's there for me to wipe away my tears. She's a hero because she is there for me to make me smile. This is just one story that we can take into our hero training, and I wanted to figure out this hero formula so that I can share with you all. So I did an experiment. I spent three days looking for hero makers. Here's what I saw. One day, my friend was crying in class. People around her were telling her to get over it, you know, to stop thinking about it. It doesn't matter. You're overreacting. But then, this other friend came to her and gave her a hug, a support, no advice, no talking, talking, just support. That's your lesson number one. Heroes are always looking out for others. My friend didn't tell her what she should feel. Because to be honest, the only one who knows what it truly feels is my friend who is crying. So instead, she thought about what might she needed at that moment. That's empathy. The second example is my school nurse was walking down the street uh, with her baby and a toddler beside her. She struggled to put everything onto her motorbike, but then when she finally managed to put her children in, she almost dropped her bag. Until a man came to her and decided to help her. That's your lesson number two. It's sometimes it doesn't require a great action to be a hero. Small gesture like that deserve to be called a hero action. There are a lot more stories we can learn from and we can add into our hero training. But there is one lesson that I learned from this event, and that is. Sometimes, the small gesture are the one that matter the most. It is the way we smile at others that makes us a hero, because we never know. Maybe our smile was the only good thing they had that day, and it was the way we hug our family and friends that makes us a hero. It is the way we give a hand to others when they needed help with their groceries. It is the way we make somebody else smile that makes us a hero. So I think that being a hero isn't all about having lots of money, or wearing capes, or wearing shining armor, and do great things and changing the world. I think that being a hero is about being kind, helpful, generous, and empathetic. These are the things we should do in our hero training. These are the, the things we should do in our daily life as a good human being and as a hero. Now we can all start training today. Do you want to be your version of Captain Kindness, or maybe you want to have your own empathetic mobile like Batman, or maybe you can be everything by yourself and be an Avenger? It is all up to you. 
If the answer to this question is yes, then you know what you have to do. Go out there, pick a color of your cape, and be a hero. Thank you.